Good Sunday night. Good Sunday night. It is January the 2nd, y'all, of 2022. I wanted to share something with you that I thought I would share it with you later, but I'm going to go ahead and share it with you now because I believe God has put it on my heart to share it with you now. So I actually had to write it down so that I would not forget any of the testimony. When God gives you a testimony, you don't wait. You go ahead and share it. I want to share this with you, and I'm going to read it off of the papers that I've written because, like I said, I didn't want to forget any of the testimony. Today is January the 2nd of 2022. I'm reading my testimony from what I wrote a few days ago. On the day before New Year's Eve, which was last Thursday of this year, I could barely get out of bed. My arms and legs and chest was hurting. I could only get up to use the restroom briefly. My New Year's ritual is to clean up my house, wash the car, take an extra hot, clean bath, and get ready for the New Year. My mom always taught us children that cleanliness is next to godliness. By the grace of God, on this past Thursday, New Year, New Year's before Friday, I finally, on that Thursday, was able to get up, go wash laundry, and the car. And I want to stop right here. I was not feeling well. I could not raise my arms up, my legs, my chest, everything. And on last Thursday, this past Thursday, I said, God, please get me up. I need a miracle. When God got me up, I was able to get up, go wash laundry and the car. As I sat in the laundromat parking lot, I was so sick. I sat in the car with the car running, but I couldn't even drive the car. And I promise you, by the grace of God, I was sitting in the car. I could not do anything. I crunk up the car. I could not do anything. I promise you. I had one hand up to my head. The other arm was I don't know where, but I sat in the car. I could not do anything. As of this past Thursday, I pray desperately that I would not die in the car. I'm in the parking lot of the laundromat. And I'm praying. And I say, God, my family would be devastated since we just lost my child. I say, God... My family would be devastating. I'm in the parking lot of a laundromat. We just lost my 33-year-old daughter. I sat with my car running for about 10 minutes. I could not even call 911. I could not lift my hands. I could not do anything. I just was praying, God... I can't do nothing. Don't let me die in this parking lot of no laundry mat. I just say, Lord, for my family, don't let me die in no parking lot of no laundry mat. My family wouldn't even know what happened to me. I couldn't even call 911. I just started saying, Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus. In a faint voice, I just heard my own voice just saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I only heard my own voice calling on Jesus. <laughs> I said, Lord, please at least let me make it back home to die on my bed through some miracle God raised my head and I was able to drive the car home once I got home I had to lay down for the rest of the day and on New Year's Eve I was still sick and not right and nobody knew But God supernaturally helped me get up, clean the house, and all was in order. But when I went to bed on New Year's Eve, no one knew but me and God that at 7 o'clock p.m. on New Year's Eve, I didn't believe I would wake up. I thought... That that was my last day. And maybe I was having a stroke or a heart attack. I didn't tell nobody, not even my family. Miraculously, I went to bed on this past New Year's Eve. And I thought I was going to not wake up. And I didn't tell nobody, not even my family. <laughs> And I didn't want them to suffer no more. I promise you on the grace of God. I thought I would not wake up on New Year's Eve. Like I said, I didn't tell my family I didn't want them to suffer no more. But God woke me up early on New Year's morning. Very early, very, very early. I had a visit. For my daughter, who is deceased, and my father, who is deceased. My daughter, most recently, I had a visit from both of them. When I woke up this New Year's Day, I was no longer sick. I got up, spent time with God. I thought I was dreaming. And I said, oh, Lord, my Savior, I thought I was dreaming. I was no longer sick at all. And I got up, and by the grace of God, I went and used the restroom because I'd had the visit from my deceased daughter, that was just deceased a year ago. And I went and used the restroom. And I realized I really was alive. But I got up. And by the grace of God. Now mind you I was so sick I thought I was going to die in that laundromat parking lot. I promised to God. But God got me up early. I had the visitation with my deceased daughter and my dad. And I got up New Year's morning early and I started cooking food, which is a tradition in my family. But I got up and started cooking food. And first of all, I did Bible study because I thought I had passed over. But after I did that, I realized I really was alive. And I got up and started cooking food. And then I started calling friends and family just to say I love you. And they thought I was just overboard. But I just wanted to tell them I love you. Because I thought I had passed over. And I just called and told them I love them. And they didn't know that I was in a near death. Or maybe had a death experience the day before. 
I don't know what God did that day, a couple of days ago, Thursday. I don't know what God did and no one would ever probably believe me. Because I know I was in death's grip. But I'm grateful. And I'm thankful. And I don't know if anyone will ever believe me. But something died. Something died. Something died. Something died. Before I entered 2022. I don't know if it was something evil. Depression. Sickness. Darkness. Grief. Or maybe all of them. But I want to say God. I thank you for your light. I wasn't I wasn't going to share this with anyone, but I shared it with my niece today because I had to do it. It was not something that I was trying to do. But something came up with my heart today on January the 2nd, and God said you be a living testimony. And I shared it with my niece. And I know my niece probably is just saying, ain't you going through grief, sister? But that's not it. And I said, Lord, and I lay here tonight and I said, Lord, I put up my, my sermon notes for today. But he said, that's not enough. And I said, well, what do you want me to do, Lord? He said, share your testimony. And what happened to you? That you were basically dead a couple of days ago. And I said, right now, Lord. I said, Lord, I thought you wanted me to wait. He said, no, ma'am. You get yourself up now. Because you may not have never have another opportunity. And these are not tears of weakness. These are tears of joy and thanksgiving. Because I said, Lord, I thought you wanted me to put up the sermon notes and then get up on Tuesday and put up the testimony, he said, no, you get up today because you may not ever have another chance to do a living testimony. And this is not to frighten anyone, just to be obedient. And when God said, get up and be obedient and share a living testimony, that's what I'm doing. And I just wanted to share it. I want to tell you, whatever God gives you on whatever given day, night, second hour, get up and share a living witness testimony when God tell you. And like I said, this is this is not to scare anyone. The tears are not a, tears of sorrow. This is tears of joy because the Lord said in obedience, get up. Don't worry about if you already put up the sermon notes for today. Share what you have been through. I promise to God, no one may not ever believe me, but I'm thankful and grateful to God. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. And I just want to tell everyone, like I said, these are just tears of joy. Because God gave me an opportunity to get up and, and share my testimony. I love you. God bless you. And um, thank you, Lord, for letting me share my testimony. And everyone, be blessed on this Sunday night. Don't waste your time in darkness. Live in the light. And God bless you. Amen.